friends, Jerry Rosa here at the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. I'm going to put together a short video demonstrating how I built a saw sharpener out of a chainsaw sharpener. And when I say saw sharpener, I'm talking about the circular saw blades out of a table saw or out of a miter saw, something like that. So anyway, we're going to get to that in just a minute, but I first have a few announcements and a few things I want to talk about. Uh, first, I'm going to uh, pat myself on the back with a couple of comments that I've received from viewers and from customers. Uh, the first customer is from uh, Bruce down in Mississippi. He says, I think you ought to promote your videos, uh, and he's talking about my training video, my mandolin training video. He says, I play in a church band a lot. We play a lot of newer praise music, but also a lot of old hymns. Our music director plays stuff in all different keys, and I have no problem playing with him in any key, thanks to your video. So there you go. Thank you, Bruce from uh, Mississippi, for that comment. So if you're interested in the mandolin video, they're available on my website, www.rosastringworks.com. Um, it is a different approach to playing music. I guarantee you it's different than anything you've ever seen. I guarantee you that that's a black and white fact. I talk about the Nashville number system and you will learn how to play by numbers rather than letters. You get these cool rules with playing with numbers that you don't get with letters. And uh, I made all these rules up and it just makes music make sense, makes it easy to play. So. If you're interested in something like that, uh, they're available on my website. Yes, it costs a little bit more than your other uh, lessons, but you get about, I'm going to say roughly 12 hours worth of lessons in this, and uh, it really does help you. I've had uh, great success with a lot of students. So again, thanks, Bruce. I got another email from uh, Marty in Colorado. He bought one of my deer antler saddles for his mandolin. As you know, I try to be honest with everybody and tell you what I think about them. I think they're great on terms of adding volume. They're really great if you don't want to break any strings at your saddle. I'm a heavy player. I break a lot of strings on ebony. I mean, I break a lot of strings on ebony, trust me. And with the deer antler, I almost break none. Uh, so it's really a big plus on those two things for adding volume, but a lot of people say it really enhances their sound too in terms of their tone and all that sort of thing. Now I'll be honest, if you got a thin sounding mandolin, it amplifies that thin sound and it doesn't do anything for it if you ask me. If you've got a good decent mid-range to low range mandolin, oh my gosh, you will love the deer antler saddle. Well anyway, he sent along a picture. Marty from Colorado and uh, here's a picture of his mandolin with the deer antler saddle on it I think you can see and here's his comments on it I got the saddle Friday popped it right on took me a bit to get action set up right but what a marvelous change to the instrument I have a 2016 Ron Cole RCA 5 picture attached we've seen the picture and I would say it was lively with lovely overtones. Good pop for bluegrass, but wonderful depth for classical pieces as well. With the deer antler saddle, I would characterize it as powerful. Tremendous projection with no loss of clarity and nuance to the tone. Uh, th can't thank you enough. So that's Marty in Colorado. Okay, so that's enough of my two commercials. Dang it, I feel like I deserve a commercial after roughly 200 videos. <laughs> a couple of videos back I mentioned how busy I am. Well, I am still absolutely completely crazy busy. And because of that, I'm going to do something that I might regret. I hope I don't. But I'm going to stop all instruments being shipped into me at this time. I, it's, I'm not that far behind on instruments that are here. As a matter of fact, I'm caught up. I'm, I'm almost through the instruments that are here presently. But that's where I want to be. I want to be able to focus on other things. I've got so many things that I have to do here on the farm, uh, including finishing up that rental house. i got to get that done. I've got all the plumbing to do in the new kitchen and in the uh, new bathroom. So that's going to be a big job <laughs> because it's a house that's already built. If you were doing it from scratch, roughing in the plumbing is not that big a deal. But in this case, it's going to be tough. So that's going to take a lot of time. 
So I'm not going to accept any future instruments being shipped to me until further notice. My guess is that's going to be through the month of November. So I, basically the rest of September, October, and November, I doubt that I'll be accepting any instruments coming this direction. Uh, if you have a real small project, you know, you need a saddle or something custom made or something, maybe I'll entertain that. But, but as far as any large projects with instruments coming in, I'm going to put the kibosh on that for right now until further notice. I hope that doesn't bite me in the rear end later on when I start accepting them again. Anyway, I hope you'll understand that I am just crazy busy. I mean, I can't even explain it to you. You wouldn't want to hear it if I told you. I mean, you just, you just wouldn't even believe it. I'm working way too many hours and I'm supposed to be retired. So, <laughs> so anyway, we're going to slow down one thing that I can control. At least I think I can. Now we're going to go into the other part of the shop and we're going to look at this little device I made for my chainsaw sharpener that converts it into a uh, circular saw sharpener. In order to demonstrate that this uh, sharpening, new sharpener will work, here is the blade I'm going to sharpen. It's on my uh, miter saw here. And I am going to uh, cut this piece of oak. Uh, you can see it's, a, it's just a real hard piece of wood. And I imagine it's going to smoke and, uh, you know, not do a very good cut. Well, it didn't smoke, but you can see it kind of burnt the end there a little bit. And uh, it's, I mean, it cut it okay, I mean, but it takes a lot of force to go through it. So we're going to see if we can sharpen this. What happened was this blade was used on a, uh, cutting a lot of that laminate flooring for the new rental house. And it just went dull big time. And so we're going to see what we can do about making that good again. First, before we get started sharpening this blade, I <clears throat> will show you how I made this. I just took, all I did was remove this carriage from the chainsaw sharpener. This, this part here is where the, uh, I've got it turned upside down and I don't want to turn it over because these, there's two ball bearings here and I don't want to lose them out of there. But anyway, this was sitting on top of here. All I did, it just takes one, uh, this handle right here unscrews from that and that's all it takes. So I set that aside. That's the only that's the only modification. I just take that off and then I made this piece here Which is I got to be honest. It's kind of complicated <laughs> But uh, I thought you know if I could make something that would fit This uh, is you know, it's it's got a, a dished out place here. It's it you know, it it's semi round or semi hollow and so I took a piece of pipe that was the exact same diameter of that and it fits in there and it slides just perfect in that slot. I welded this bolt in here and I welded on this piece of one inch steel to the end of this and um, I machined down uh, one size for my 10 inch blades, that's this outer one, and then I have another size here that's for these bigger blades, and you can see that it just fits right in there. You can turn this, and this part here is a little dodgy, I will admit, but you turn this, and it will stop the tooth right here, and you can adjust it up or down with this screw. Okay, once you get your blade set on your arbor, then you can uh, then I have this thing sitting here, and this is just clamped to the table right here. It's all, you know, and I made this little adjustment that goes up and down, and the tooth catches on this. You can go up or down with it, and then lock it in with this extra nut and lock that spot. Once you get this all locked in, you, you, well, what you're doing is you're locking it in so that it cuts correctly up here. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, the blade cuts up here, so you can, you can adjust this down until it cir circles around and then and the blade engages the tooth here. There's a gauge here that I can pivot it, you know, uh, you know, 35 degrees that way, 35 degrees this way. Obviously, I don't need to go that far. But every other tooth, you may know, has a slight pivot to it. So I can pivot that on to, to have the uh, grinder cut that exact same angle. 
So it takes a little bit of setup, it's a little tedious to get it set up, but once you get it set up, then it's pretty fast. You just spin it, cut a tooth, spin it. Every other, you cut every other tooth, then you would rotate this dial the opposite direction, and cut every other tooth. So I'll go ahead and get her set up here, and we'll start cutting and see what it does. Admittedly, it's a little bit fiddly to get set up, but once you get it set up, it uh, seems to work pretty good. So I'm going to put on my safety gear here so I don't breathe that delf. Well, that was the first 12 inch blade I've attempted. So it uh, worked okay. I had to get a few bugs worked out, but once I finally got it set where I wanted it, it went around it pretty quick. Now, hopefully the second time around will be easier. I'm going to loosen this up and see what degree I have this uh, on, and hopefully that will repeat. I have it on, I guess I'd say that was five degrees, five, 10, 15, 20, 20. Yeah, I have it on five degrees to that side. So I'm gonna move it on five degrees to the other side. And hopefully it'll work for cutting the other side of this. I will have to re-fidget everything around and get it lined up again. We'll bring you back when we get ready to go. We got her set up for the other side now. So let's see what we can do. Once you get it set up, it goes really, really fast. Setting it up is not that easy. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. It's a little tricky. I, you know, that was quicker than the first time. So, you know, you just take some getting used to it. Let's see how it cuts. We're back at the saw. I've got the blade installed. And quite frankly, I don't know what to expect. I think it sharpened it pretty good, but I couldn't tell you for sure if it did or not. So here we go. Let's just see what happens. Got to plug it back in first. You should always unplug your saw when you're changing the blades or anything, and I did, so there you go. Here we go. Well, I'm not gonna lie to you, that didn't cut great. It, it cuts smooth, the, the, the end of the cut looks good, and I don't see as much burning. Now that is a very hard piece of dried out oak. Let's just cut a piece of soft pine and see what it feels like. Well, it's better than it was, but I'll be honest, it's not perfect. You know, I think it's gonna take some fiddling with the thing and the setup and getting the angles exactly right and that sort of thing. But it, but it definitely cuts better than it did. So in conclusion, did it work? Well, mixed reviews, I will be honest. Um, it, it definitely cut better than it cut before, but you could still feel some pressure going through the wood where generally speaking, a brand new blade will just kind of go right through the wood without much pressure at all. So I don't think I have it tweaked just right. I have a feeling that's more my technique and getting used to setting it up rather than the actual uh, business of uh, the sharpener itself. So I think it's a pretty good design. Uh, I'm just going to have to work on my technique, and uh, if I come up with any uh, update to it, I'll put out another video. Thanks for watching. Yeah.